Good morning. We find ourselves at the midpoint of the great Easter octave. And today, I would like to just review for all of us uh, what the church's Easter octave is and why we celebrate the Easter octave uh, differently from the octave of Christmas and a few of the other octaves that have developed over the centuries uh, in the church's liturgical life. Well, of course, Easter Sunday, last Sunday, is the greatest uh, day and the high point, literally, of our church year, liturgically, spiritually, and in every way. And uh, the Easter octave actually begins uh, with Easter Sunday and then runs for eight days to this coming Sunday, which Pope St. John Paul II uh, declared it would always be Divine Mercy Sunday, which is a, a beautiful way uh, of beginning not just the second week of the Easter season, but it's the final, the eighth day of the Easter octave. Uh, but let's for a moment look at uh, what distinguishes the Easter octave from the other octaves we celebrate in the course of our church year. You will note that the proper prayers for the masses for each day of the Easter octave all refer to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus and very much uh, mirror the proper prayers for the Easter Sunday Mass. But where the Easter octave is most distinguished from the other octaves is that the first reading, uh, always from a passage uh, of the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel, they all pertain to Easter Sunday. In fact, the Gospels are chosen by the church from the four Gospels, and they are parts of the account of the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. The reason for this is that Easter, the resurrection of our Lord from the dead, which uh, follows upon his saving passion and death and burial, again, is the heart and the soul of Catholic faith and Catholic life. Everything we do liturgically and spiritually in the church begins and always refers us back to the crucified and risen Jesus. So in other words, the Easter octave uh, is a continuous celebration of that beautiful, merciful act of Almighty God through the saving death and resurrection of His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Not because we don't know that, not because we don't believe in it, but because it was the life-changing moment in the history of mankind. And literally, uh, the death and the rising of Jesus from the dead gives an entirely new meaning, not just to physical creation, but to human life itself. And so as we continue in the Easter octave, truly let us rejoice and be glad for the fact of God's loving mercy to us all, and let us enjoy this beautiful Easter season and recommit ourselves to being those good and faithful disciples who live the life of the resurrection and we help others do the very same by the good example we set for them.